Let me show you how to bring your designs to life with Adobe Illustrator's 3D and Materials tool. Follow along in this tutorial and learn how to create star shapes that can be turned into stunning 3D artwork. We'll cover how to apply an inflate 3D effect, adjust the lighting, and render the asset for best quality. I'll also go over how to save the 3D asset to your Creative Cloud library so you can use it across other Adobe applications. Let's jump in and get started. I've gone ahead and created a new document that's 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels here in Adobe Illustrator. Let's go ahead and create our star shape. For this, let's click on the rectangle tool and then click anywhere on the artboard. And in the dialog, let's set the width to 715 pixels and the height also to 715 pixels. Go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click on my selection tool and then use the alignment tools up top to align the horizontal and vertical centers to the artboard. I also want to change the color of this, so I'm just going to go to my swatches panel. I'll choose this cyan blue down below, and I don't want a border on this, so I'm going to click on the stroke and choose none for stroke. So you should have a square shape on the artboard like so. Next, let me show you how to use the direct selection tool to turn this square into a star. Let's click on the direct selection tool, that's the white arrow, and hover over the corner handle. Hold Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows and click once and then drag inwards or downwards. And you can see that our shape went from a square to a star. Now I want to make two other copies for this. I'm going to click on my selection tool and then just hold Option and drag another copy. In the Properties panel, let's change the width to 200 pixels. Ensure that your link is turned on to maintain the width and height proportions. Press Tab on your keyboard and you can see that those two are now 200 pixels each. I'm going to hold Option or Alt on Windows again and drag another copy. And this time I'm going to set this width and height to 100 pixels. I'm just going to adjust these smaller star shapes, place them closer to the main star. And then I'm going to select all three and open my Pathfinder panel, which I have docked on the right hand side. You can find this under Window and then Pathfinder. In the Pathfinder window, under Shape Modes, let's click on Unite to unite all three of those shapes into one main shape. You can see if I click on it, I can move them all together. I'm going to click on the 3D and Materials panel here, which I have docked on the right hand side. If you don't see it, go up to Window and choose 3D and Materials. With the shape selected, I'm going to choose Inflate as my 3D type. I'm going to set the depth slider to anywhere around 14 or 1500 in this case. However, this will depend on your specific shape and the shape you're using. So I'm just going to type in here 1400, just like that, and press Tab. I'm not going to set a twist or a taper. I'm going to leave all that on the default settings. There are some settings here for rotation, which we'll leave at zero all the way around. Next, we're going to focus on the lighting. So I'm happy with the inflate effect here and the depth set to 1400. Let's click on the lighting tab to go to the lighting settings. You can see there are some presets here, standard, diffuse, top left, and right. You could set it to top left as an example, and you can see that the little circle on this sphere is set to the top left. I can click and drag it to the area that I want. In this case, I'm going to set it to the bottom left-hand corner, something like that. And you can see if I scroll down in the panel, down below, the values you see in this area here will be dependent on how you adjust the lighting settings above. So for example, if I move this to the center again or to the top right, you can see that these settings will change. I'm going to set it again back to the bottom left. Something like that will work. And you can see you get more of a shadow in the upper right hand corner and more light in the bottom left. Next, let's look at how to apply ray tracing rendering to produce a high quality 3D graphic. In the upper right hand corner of the 3D and materials panel, you'll see a render icon. Before clicking that icon, 
let's choose the arrowhead to launch the render settings. In this case, I'd like to turn on ray tracing. Here, you could choose the quality of the render settings. In this case, I'll choose medium. You have options to reduce noise or render as a vector. I'll keep those on the default settings and then simply click render and watch as Illustrator renders a stunning, high quality 3D result. As a last step, let me show you how to save the 3D asset to your CC library and use it across other Adobe apps. To add the 3D asset to your Creative Cloud library, first you'll need to open the library's panel. You can see I already have mine open on the right hand side, it's next to the properties panel. If you don't see the library's panel, go up to window and choose libraries. Next, I'm going to click on the 3D asset and I've gone ahead and created a folder called 3D assets within my libraries panel. You could do that by clicking the folder down below. Instead, I'm going to click on this plus icon to add elements. And in this case, I want to choose graphic. You'll see that the 3D asset has been added to the libraries panel. I'm going to double click so I can rename this asset. I'll call it 3D stars and press return or enter on my keyboard. Next, let's jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you how to add the 3D asset to an existing design. In Photoshop, I have a social media post and I'd like to add the 3D star asset to it. I'm going to access the libraries panel in Photoshop. You can see I have it docked on the right hand side. I'll click it and here is the 3D stars asset that we just created in Illustrator. To add it to your Photoshop design, simply click and drag it onto the canvas. From here, I could just grab one of the handles and resize it just like so and then reposition it where I want. In this case, I'd like it in the upper right hand corner, something like that. I'm going to press return to accept the changes, hold my option or alt key and drag another copy, press command T for free transform and I'm going to scale this one down a little bit smaller and place it over the first featured speaker here. Press return to accept that, hold option or alt and add one more. Command or control T to go into free transform, scale it down just a little bit and position it where you want and then press return. And that's how simple it is to turn flat vector shapes into stunning 3D artwork and use the asset across other Adobe applications. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create stunning 3D artwork in Adobe Illustrator. If you found it helpful, leave a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest tutorial content. Thanks again and see you in the next video.